So uh, today we're going to be going through some of the features of Google Maps. Uh, it's a fairly you know familiar interface for most of you. You've used it at one point or another to, to navigate or to look up an address. Um, for the purposes of this class, we're going to be looking at it from uh, a editing and map creating standpoint because it has some uh, pretty neat features for creating and sharing geographic data. So first order of business, we go to maps.google.com. Uh, in order to create a map and save it, you need to be signed in using your Google account. So if you don't have one of those, just sign up anyway. They're free and fairly unobtrusive. Uh, so we sign in. And you can see now that I'm signed in, uh, I am centered on the city of Burlington in Vermont. Um, I'm going to go to My Places. And you can see that I've got... Uh, it's pretty open at this point. I've created one map, but now I'm going to create another one. So I'll hit Create Map. And let's say I'm interested in recording the location of potholes, uh, just so that you know I can share this collaboratively with other folks. I can uh, maybe have the Public Works Department take a look at it if I'm really lucky. Uh, so we'll call this potholes. We're going to make this public. And we'll hit Save. And then there are a couple of things you can do with this. So let's say I just hit this absolute monster of a pothole uh, on my commute to work, and it was right about there. I'm going to call it a pothole. Uh, change the symbology to reflect the seriousness of the impact. Let's go with a, oh, uh, what do you think? Should we go with that, or a hazmat symbol? Ah, I'll call it a volcano. All right, volcano equals pothole. Now that's marked on the map. And uh, just so that I can say we're maintaining our focus within the city, I'm going to add a, uh, a KML file that represents the city boundary, which is something that I've actually saved out from QGIS. I had uh, town boundaries in a shapefile format, uh, and then I used QGIS to save it into a KML format, which KML is the uh, geospatial format that Google created and maintains. Uh, the difference between that and a shapefile is that it's much more built for the web. It's a single file with uh, projection and uh, geographic and attribute information combined in it instead of a shapefile, which is at least four files. Um, but in any case, we'll go to import, and you can see it'll accept KML, KMZ, which is just a compressed KML, or GORSS, which honestly you're probably not going to run into. Uh, we'll choose the file, there's BTB bound. We'll upload that, and you can see it pretty quickly drops it on the map. Um, something that you're going to notice uh, as you add vector files like this to a web map is that they tend to slow down the speed of uh, the response of the map. You can see as I mouse over this this file here, it pulls up every node in the in the geographic feature, and you can see there are a lot of them, um, probably a few hundred in the course of this town, this city boundary here. Uh, Normally what you're looking at when you look at a web map is actually a series of rasters. Um, the rest of this map, however much it looks like there's vector road layers on it and vector labels, uh, it's actually just a series of pre-rendered tiles in pixelated raster format. Um, the reason for that is that um, a, a single image file in the form of a tile uh, is passed around a lot quicker on the web than a series of vector coordinates. Um, when you throw in something like this, it makes your browser do uh, a, a fairly large amount of work similar to what a desktop GIS program is doing when it's rendering. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a lot harder for a browser to do that uh, over the internet than it is for a desktop program like QGIS to do it on your computer. Um, so in any case, try to limit the file size of the vectors that you upload this way uh, because they don't really perform that well. But that said, once you get them in, you can click on them, we'll call this the boundary, and then you can actually, uh, you have some styling options here. Right now the lines are red, I'll make them yellow, maybe a little bit wider, uh, hit OK. And there, that's my styled boundary. So uh, I can safely share this map and show other folks that I'm talking about potholes within this boundary, the city of Burlington. And we'll add another one there. Say I saw one on Pearl Street the other day. Yep, there we go.
So yeah, this is a Google map that uh, I have just created and edited. Now we've been doing edits and overlays and data creation and all this stuff in uh, the GIS context, but what makes this particularly interesting in the web context is that it's all really portable. Um, I'll hit this link icon here, just the, the hyperlink thing, uh, and you can see it gives me a link to this map. Um, the URL as it stands is actually pretty long uh, because it includes things like the uh, latitude and the longitude of the center of the map as I have it right now. Uh, and I think the zoom level is in there as well, a few other items that tell Google what information to pull out when somebody goes to this URL. But if you want to share this, just hit short URL and you get this awesome short little thing here that you can copy and send around via email, via social media. Um, this is what I mean by portability. This is a very shareable link. So I'll just paste that in. And there's the map that I've just created, now visible to somebody else. And we can actually do some pretty uh, rudimentary crowded crowdsourcing with this sort of interface because there's the collaborate function. Uh, basically, when you hit this, it just gives you a menu asking for email addresses of people who you want to allow to use uh, to edit this map as well. Um, so you can enter in, you know, if you have a group of people who are also you know, you, you commute with maybe, or uh, you've, you know, you've heard them also complaining about potholes in town, send them an email through this. Uh, so you'll enter their email address here, add a quick message. Uh, get them to, to add information to this and make it a much more, you know, a rich database of, uh, of content then hit send invitations. Once you've done that, then uh, they'll receive a link and they'll be able to add points of their own to the map. Uh, you can open it much wider than that by hitting this allow anyone to edit this map, uh, in which case anybody who has the URL will be able to add points, delete points, edit features. Um, that might be a, a bit more open than you're looking for in this context, but that is certainly a way of making this broadly collaborative uh, and crowdsourcing information. So those are the basics of Google Maps, and hopefully that'll be a uh, useful and fairly easy way for you guys to uh, use geospatial data on the web. We'll look at a few other methods, but this is certainly one of the more familiar ones.